In late 2013, a broad coalition of business, faith, health, student, labor advocacy, and environmental groups sponsored a statewide tour of Maryland to educate local populations about the liquid natural gas export facility that Dominion Energy has proposed at Cove Point in Calvert County, Maryland. First of all, let me say that in an era of rapid global warming, Maryland, our state of Maryland, for the past 10 years has been on a steady path of transitioning off of climate changing fossil fuels. That's the good news. With policies for cleaner cars, cleaner electricity like wind and solar, and by putting a cap on carbon pollution from coal-fired power plants, it's been a great vision, a great vision across the state that's been bought into by local and state officials, elected officials, citizens like you. They've all committed to it, they've fought for it, and it's amazingly exciting. I mean, we've been reducing pollution through clean energy for the last 10 years in this state, which is, again, very exciting because after all, uh, as someone funny once said, a really, really big solar energy spill is called a nice day. Um, so that's good, that's a good thing. But in the past six months, a radical detour has been proposed for our state. It's a very different energy vision that would seriously knock us off our current path. Now, who is proposing this detour? Well, as Bill McKibben said in his introduction, it's a company called Dominion Resources based in Richmond, Virginia. Dominion wants Maryland to not build wind farms and solar rooftop arrays, but to build one of the biggest single fossil fuel energy facilities ever constructed in our state. This $3.8 billion facility would take 770 million cubic feet of fracked gas from across Appalachia pipe it to a place called Cove Point in Southern Maryland, liquefy it to about 270 degrees below zero, put it in thousand foot long tanker refrigeration ships and send it to Asia where it would be revaporized, piped again and burned in India and Japan. That's what Dominion wants you, me, our state to do. Now the argument I'm about to make tonight is that this plan is a virtual pollution worst case scenario for Maryland. That indeed, even to my own surprise, when I first began investigating the Dominion plan, it turns out that this fracking plus liquefaction plus export idea is almost as bad and perhaps worse than the combustion of coal, of coal for power here or overseas. Now, we're at a crossroads in Maryland in the next six or seven months, we have to decide as a state, are we going to stay the course with bigger and better clean energy development or are we going to take a radical detour? Now, keep in mind that we're talking about natural gas. Natural gas. You've all heard the gas industry. It's the clean fossil fuel, they say. The bridge fuel to the future. And in the early 2000s, I used to use these same phrases. I advocated for natural gas as a cleaner fossil fuel bridge to the ultimate world of wind and solar. But this was before something new came along to change that whole bridge calculation. That new something was fracking. Now we are being offered fracked natural gas to be liquefied and exported. This is something else entirely. This is not, by any reasonable definition, clean energy. But how can this be? How can something we assumed was good for us, or at least better for us, turn out to be bad for us? Well, how did we come to learn that our old assumptions about smoking were wrong? Or our old assumption that human beings cannot possibly change the global climate? How did we change our views? The answer is evidence. I will present newly emerging and completely measurable evidence tonight that the Cove Point proposal is a clear net negative for our state and our country. And almost all the evidence I'm about to present is not challenged by the gas industry. I'm using data from Dominion Resources itself and uncontroversial data from the US EPA, the International Energy Agency and others. Nothing you're going to hear tonight in terms of data was commissioned by Greenpeace. 
This is publicly available, uncontroversial data that anyone can find online, evidence. So let's begin. Last spring, Dominion Resources submitted an application to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and to the Maryland Public Service Commission proposing this $3.8 billion facility in Calvert County on the Bay to liquefy natural gas for Asia. And by the way, $3.8 billion, that's like building 12 Ravens football stadiums in Southern Calvert County. It's like building something bigger than the Wilson Bridge. This is how big this facility is. But first of all, where is all this gas gonna come from? From here from the Marcellus Shale, from new and rapidly expanding drilling using the process we all know and we're all familiar with now, hydraulic fracturing or fracking. You drill down a mile deep, you drill another mile horizontally, then you set off underground explosions in the pipe, the pipe shrap shrapnel literally punctures the rock, you pump down millions of gallons of water with chemicals and sand, and then you pump up the gas. I think most of us have heard about all the attendant problems that come with te this technique, and they include the full-on industrialization of rural areas, increased truck traffic, carcinogenic chemicals used in the drilling process, the confirmed triggering of earthquakes from drilling water reinjection, and of course, flammable tap water in numerous areas adjacent to drilling. But one statistic I want to focus on in particular is the US EPA's estimate that about 1.4% of all the natural gas, also known as methane, produced from the fracking process actually escapes into the atmosphere. It becomes a quote unquote fugitive gas. This 1.4% number is pretty conservative because there are lots of other people, academics and others in federal agencies who think the leakage rate is much higher than 1.4%. But tonight, let's just stick with the EPA's very conservative 1.4%. Again, I wanna use rock solid evidence tonight. Now, to begin with, this number, 1.4%, is a problem. This is leakage, not just from the drilling process, but the storage of the gas and the piping of it over long distances. This is important because according to the Nobel Prize winning Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, methane is 28 times more powerful at trapping heat in the atmosphere than CO2 over a 100 year time frame. 28 times worse, pound for pound, than the CO2 that comes out of the coal plant smokestack. Now we'll return to that fact in a moment. Back to fracking itself. So after the gas is fracked, it has to be piped all the way from the Marcellus Shell region to Calvert County. And here, here's what natural gas pipelines look like now in the mid-Atlantic area, uh, in the mid-Atlantic region, and how many new pipelines and widened pipelines will be required through Maryland if we start exporting fracked gas? We don't know how many pipelines and how many miles because Dominion won't tell us. But what we do know is that considering the enormous volume, the increase in volume of that gas it would, that would be piped through our state, lots of new and ex expanded pipelines are coming to Maryland. They are coming if we build this facility. Now keep in mind that when the US EPA says 1.4% of US gas leaks into the atmosphere, it means from the drilling process, the storage process, the piping, the full life cycle of that gas, 1.4 of it escapes into the atmosphere. So the more gas that you drill, you store, and you pipe, the more is leaking. Now here is a photograph that looks like smoke coming out of this gas storage facility, but this is actually an infrared camera image of methane leaking from this facility in Texas. What looks like black smoke is actually invisible hydrocarbon vapors full of methane. This is the leakage. If you can't see it with your naked eye. This is what's coming out of the pipelines, the fracking wells, the compressor stations, the storage tanks. This is the stuff that's 28 times more powerful than CO2. So the facts so far. We know methane is 28 times more powerful than CO2. We know the EPA says 1.4% of the gas production in the US leaks into the sky. So now, how much total gas are we talking about that Dominion wants to transfer from the Marcellus Shale region to Cove Point in Southern Maryland? Dominion says 770 million cubic feet per day. Now, how much is that? 
It's nearly four times more natural gas than all Maryland households use every day for all purposes, for cooking, for water heating, for home heating, everything. Four times more than statewide daily residential use. So Dominion basically, it wants to export four Maryland's worth of gas every day. Now, whatever the number of miles of pipelines that's, that that's going to take, one thing is certain, there will be a lot of leakage and the transmission infrastructure will include more than just pipelines. To travel, the gas has to be kept under very high pressure. So every 40 to 100 miles, it has to be repressurized or compressed. That requires a compressor station. Now Dominion, as we speak, is trying to force the town of Myersville in your county of Frederick County to allow the construction of a 16,000 horsepower compressor station the size of a large barn less than a mile from the town's elementary school. The townspeople and the city council are unified in their opposition to this compressor station but now they are being sued by Dominion to force them to rezone their land to allow for this compressor station. They are being sued now, here's a picture of the citizens of Myersville uh, uh, protesting uh, near the elementary school. These are students right here. Um, and uh, again, these are folks that are protesting the fact that Dominion wants to export to Asia four times the amount of gas than we use every day. And, and it's all designed to get that gas from the Marcellus Shale to what end point? They're gonna go through Frederick County. They're gonna start in Marcellus Shale in Appalachia. And where's it gonna wind up? a small coastal area called Cove Point in Calvert County in Southern Maryland. Now, if you've never been to Cove Point or Southern Calvert, it's one of the most beautiful settings in our state. It's right on the Chesapeake Bay. Here's the nearby town of Solomon's Island. It's like a little slice of New England. Um, here is nearby Calvert Cliff State Park. And here's the lovely lighthouse right on the tip of Cove Point. So, once all this gas gets piped down to Cove Point, then what? Well, Dominion would dramatically expand a facility that's already there, currently on the Chesapeake Bay, but was designed to import natural gas from when gas was cheaper abroad than it is here at home, or it was here at home. Now, again, fracking has changed all that. It's changed everything. Here's the company's current import facility at Cove Point in Calvert County. The export, to export the gas, Dominion says in its application, its own application, its numbers, Dominion has told the Maryland Public Service Commission that it would build a utility scale 130 megawatt power plant to create the huge amount of electricity on site just for the quote unquote liquefaction process. This chills the gas from Appalachia to 270 degrees below zero. And uh, mind you that this whole power plant running full speed all the time, utility scale, sends no electricity for Maryland ratepayers. We get none of the power. Dominion gets all of it. We just get all the pollution and everything else. The company would also build various compressors and chillers on site, giant refrigeration and compression facilities. Together, these energy intensive industrial scale facilities would pollute the local community with 552 tons of nitrogen oxide a year and 4.6 tons of sulfur dioxide. According, these are Dominion's own numbers, which of course create smog. So the air pollution in Calvert County is gonna get worse. Then also toxins like mercury and acid gases would have to be stripped out of the natural gas. Gas, the gas itself, when it comes out of the ground, has impurities in it. And before you can liquefy it, you gotta take out all the mercury, the acid gases, creating these toxins that have to be either stored in Calvert County or trucked across our state and put somewhere else. But perhaps the most astounding fact of all is that the entire liquefaction plant the plan itself to liquefy the gas, according to Dominion's own numbers, would generate 3.3 million tons of planet warming CO2 per year. That would make this plant itself the fourth largest source of greenhouse gases in the entire state, worse than four of our current coal-fired power plants. This, all of this for quote-unquote clean natural gas. Hmm. 
And then there's the noise pollution, lots of noise pollution. This massive industrial process in rural Calvert County would be so thunderously loud that Dominion has surreally declared that it will build a wall, a giant, giant wall to protect the local citizens from the thunderous noise. That wall will be six stories tall and three quarters of a mile long in a rural area, a sound barrier along the southern and western sides of the plant. Now, how big is that wall? It would be the tallest structure in Calvert County. In height, here's how it would look compared to the Lincoln Memorial. And here is the way it would look compared to the Solomon's Island Bridge. I don't know if you guys have ever been down there and taken the bridge from Solomon's Island over the St. Mary's. That is a big bridge. And this is literally 3,500 3, feet wide here. This is what the wall would look like. So I guess finally natural gas is a bridge fuel when you think about it. But we're not done. This liquefied gas now has to get to Asia. Dominion would pour it onto at least 90 refrigeration tankers like this, 1,000 feet long, coming into the mouth of the bay, burning heavy crude, dumping billions of gallons of ballast water into the sea and the surrounding bay, and then turning around and making the six and 7,000 mile trips back to Japan and India, respectively. These are, Dominion has already sold contracts. They've already sold this Appalachian gas to companies in Japan and India. From there, once it gets to Japan and India, once it gets to the shores of those countries, it would be revaporized and pumped by energy-intensive compressor stations and through pipes to the final end users in New Delhi and Tokyo, where our Appalachian gas, long-traveling gas, is finally lit on fire for energy use. Really? <laughs> really? We would rather do all of this than just develop homegrown, uncomplicated wind, solar, and efficiency here and abroad. Really? But wait, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's just review Dominion's plan once more. We release climate changing methane into the atmosphere from the drilling, the fracking of the gas. We pipe the gas. Um, and still we vent more methane into the atmosphere from the pipes. We liquefy it in Calvert County, more planet warming CO2. We tanker it, more greenhouse gases, revaporize it in Asia more, pipe it through Asia more, and then we burn it more. When you add it all up, Dominion's co-point liquefaction facility for frac gas would trigger more global warming pollution than any other process or facility in the entire state of Maryland. More than all of our seven existing coal-fired power plants combined, thus making it clear that fracking, liquefying, exporting is at least as bad, if not worse, than burning coal here or in Asia. Mind-blowing. Meanwhile, scientists have warned us that we have now entered a world already at 400 parts per million carbon pollution in the atmosphere, more than at any time in human history. We have put more and more CO2 from the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas into the atmosphere than human beings have ever seen, measured as 400 parts per million. We are being painfully affected right now by this heat trapping carbon. Pepco, the DC area utility, is spending $1 billion as we speak to put more power lines underground. Why? Here's a company ad. This is, they ran this ad throughout DC area metro stations over the summer. Climate change? and Pepco is changing with it. They've trimmed 6,000 miles of trees and they've, they're burying 821 miles more of underground pipes. This is a billion dollars that Pepco says they're spending right now that affect ratepayers and raise their rates because of what? Climate change. Says who? Sierra Club? Greenpeace? No, Pepco says it's climate change. And this is all from the climate change that we're experiencing by burning fossil fuels. And in 2006, Allstate Insurance Company stopped offering new homeowners insurance policies along most of coastal Maryland because the company said that sea level rise was becoming dangerously accelerated and storms were getting bigger, according to Allstate. That hurts us. Meanwhile, Bill McKibben and market experts have told us that to avoid worse, truly catastrophic impacts of global warming, we have to keep 80% of the world's known reserves of fossil fuel in the ground. That includes natural gas. 
in the year 2013 in a 400 parts per million atmosphere, why in the world are we talking about bringing to the surface nearly a billion cubic feet of gas and sending it to Asia at the virtual carbon equivalent of coal? Why are we even having this conversation? The bottom line is that this is a radical idea. This is a radical idea that Dominion Resources is pushing on our state. It's radical, a radical detour. Of course, of course, Dominion disagrees. What does it say? What does the company say in its defense? 130 jobs. 130 permanent jobs will come to Cove Point in Calvert County. There will be more construction jobs, yes, but those only last a few years. Um, and yes, they're important to our workers, but we believe there are many better ways to get construction jobs through wind and solar, and we're gonna talk about that. And many of the jobs that would come to Calvert County for this liquefaction process are gonna be non-local jobs. They're gonna be for people who live outside of the region. Um, yes, there will be a few million dollars in new tax revenue for the county and for state budgets, and these tax revenues are important. Uh, but I ask you, is it worth it? Is that worth turning Maryland into an international sacrifice zone for environmental and economic negative impacts? Yes, negative economic impacts are involved here. It turns out that exporting, and I'm gonna explain these numbers in a second, it turns out that exporting liquefied natural gas is bad for just about everybody in the US economy. Says who? Says the Sierra Club? Sorry, I keep picking on Sierra Club. Says the Sierra Club, no says the U.S. Department of Energy. The U.S. DOE commissioned a study earlier this year that said that if America exports a significant amount of its natural gas overseas, the prices will rise as much as 27%. Natural gas will go up nationwide because international demand, by definition, will rise for our gas. And this hurts just about everybody in the United States, according to the DOE. Now, look at this. They ran all these different scenarios. What if we export liquefied natural gas, a lot of it from the Marcellus Shale? Um, these are all the different sectors of the economy. AGR, agriculture. Farmers lose. Farmers will have income decrease. Energy intensive services, their income's gonna increase. Other services, manufacturing loses. Right? Everybody loses except for, oh, wait a minute, these guys, they win really big. Oh my gosh, look at how much they increase their income. Now, this is according to the DOE. These are the facts, this is the evidence. And I ask you, how bad does a project have to get? Now, what does Dominion say about global warming and about 400 parts per million carbon in the atmosphere? Well, Dominion says over and over again, despite evidence to the contrary, that natural gas is 50% cleaner than coal, 50%. Again and again, they say this number, but as Dominion well know, knows full well, it's only 50% cleaner at the point of combustion. When you burn the coal and the natural gas, yes, the natural gas emits 50% less CO2, but if you take the full life cycle of the fracked, liquefied, and exported natural gas and compare it to the full life cycle of coal burned here in the United States or overseas, Dominion's quote-unquote clean co-point gas is actually, again, using conservative estimates, at least 80% as bad as coal in terms of the climate and really using more realistic assumptions, i.e. that the gas pipelines in India leak even more than ours. That's more realistic. If you take these assumptions into account, then this co-point gas is almost certainly worse than coal. We're going to do all of this, compressor stations, fracking, pipelines through Myersville, the building something 12 times bigger than Raven Stadium, messing up all of Calvert County, shipping it, tankers into the Chesapeake Bay for something worse than coal? It's just mind-boggling. Yet Dominion, and its own ad still says over and over again that Coal Point is good for fighting global warming. Here's an ad they ran just two Sundays ago, a direct quote from their ad saying over and over again, this is gonna be better than coal. Now, the company has claimed, Dominion has claimed that it wants to develop wind and solar power also. They claim that all the time. But this company is so addicted to fossil fuels in its home state of Virginia, remember this is a Virginia company, that it is by far the biggest global warming polluter in the state of Virginia, by far. 
In fact, the company said in 2012, just last year, that it was forecasting over the next 15 years that as the world passes 400 parts per million carbon in the atmosphere, the Dominion said that they were going to increase their generation of clean, carbon-free energy of wind and solar by, hold on, 0.4%. Over the next 15 years, in a world where PEPCO is saying that we're already being hurt by global warming and all states retreating from our state, Dominion says 0.4%, 0.4%, a 0.4% increase in wind and solar. Now, this company wants to bring global warming solutions to Maryland with fracked, exported gas? They want to help us on the climate front? Does anyone on the planet believe that this is a real motivation on the part of Dominion? I think the truth is Dominion is not concerned about climate change. It's concerned about profits. That's why it's pounding on Maryland's door and suing townspeople in Frederick and all the rest. That's what the evidence says. Those are the facts. That's what the DOE profit study says. So the biggest carbon polluter in Virginia now wants to become the biggest carbon polluter in your state and my state in Maryland. Now, does it make us environmental radicals to say no to this? Dominion calls me a radical, an environmental radical for opposing this plan. Really? Fracking, earthquakes, flammable tap water, piping, compressing, liquefying, tankering to Asia, revaporizing, more piping, then finally lighting our Appalachian gas on fire in Asia. What could possibly be more radical than this? The company's larger worldview is even more radical. ExxonMobil, Peabody Coal, British Petroleum, Dominion. These companies are totally committed to a business model of combusting fossil fuels that they know they know is altering the Earth's very climate. I'm radical? What could be more radical than knowingly changing the weather over every square inch of the Earth to buy luxury cars and luxury homes for a few fossil fuel executives today? So, So it probably should not surprise any of us that Dominion doesn't even want to do a comprehensive environmental impact statement for its co-point liquefaction plant. For obvious reasons, under federal law, energy projects of this size are almost always required to have an environmental impact statement that would calculate the full cumulative environmental consequences of Cove Point, from drilling in Appalachia to the tanker ships coming into the bay to take it away. But instead, Dominion wants to rely on an outmoded, an old, nearly 10-year-old environmental impact statement that it conducted for its much smaller pre-fracking import facility, again, nearly a decade away. No environmental impact statement for Myersville and the cumulative impacts of fracking in Marcellus Shale and the piping and the compressor stations and the takers. No, it doesn't want to do that. Just hang on to the old one that is irrelevant because it's so small and pre-fracking. But it turns out that the people of Maryland strongly disagree with Dominion. Because last month, a Gonzalez poll, respected Gonzalez poll, showed that 80% of Marylanders want a cumulative thorough environmental study done before any construction at Coe Point. If Dominion's fracking plus liquefaction plan is so good for the environment, so clean, then why in the world would they be afraid of an environmental impact statement? Tonight, I hope that you'll join me and others in writing a letter asking for this study, ask the governor of Maryland to demand of the federal government that we get a full EIS to study the environmental impact of this plant. It will not by itself stop this plant, but it will get more facts on the table which have been sorely lacking in this whole conversation over Co Point. But more than anything I've said tonight, here's probably the biggest reason the Co Point plan represents a huge crossroads for us, a giant detour. If Co Point is built, there will be fracking in Maryland. I assure you, lots of fracking, I promise you. The Cove Point decision to allow liquefaction and export of gas in our state is simultaneously, or through our state, is simultaneously a decision on whether or not to frack all across Maryland. 
So far, thanks to Governor O'Malley's special commission to study and in 2014 report on the risk of fracking here in Maryland, there has been no fracking in our state to date. No decision has been made to allow it. Thank you, Governor O'Malley. Now, of course, we all know that there's lots of fracking in Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia. In fact, in Pennsylvania, where we've, how many of you have seen the movie Gasland? Raise your hand. Okay, Josh Fox is from where? Pennsylvania. All those impacts, most of those impacts in that first film are in Pennsylvania. Now, we've seen the flammable tap water, you know, all the rest, the truck traffic, all the impacts on local communities. So I ask you, how many fracking wells are there currently in Pennsylvania? Anybody know? About 7,000 fracking wells. Now, the gas industry says that they want to get up to, and they believe they can get to, about 100,000 fracking wells in Pennsylvania by the end of this decade. So I ask you, how do we get from, go from 7,000 in Pennsylvania to 100,000 by the end of the decade? An export market, exporting that gas through Maryland to Asia. That's how they propose to get it. Now, I ask you, does anyone, anyone think that we're going to spend $3.8 billion dollars on a facility in Maryland, in Calvert County, to export fracked gas to the world, but we won't actually frack in Maryland? Of course we will. The pressure will be enormous. The price of natural gas will go up. The gas industry will lean on our politicians and say, what? You need to drill down, baby, and explode the earth and get some of these profits that everybody else is getting. How can you let us pipe this gas through your state and not jump in? It will be unbearable. We will frack in Maryland. So the decision of whether to grant Dominion's $3.8 billion wish to export is simultaneously a decision to open up our state to drilling. They are one and the same. That's why so many people now oppose the Co-Point idea. Not just in Calvert County at Ground Zero, not just in Frederick County where pipelines and compressors will go, not just in Baltimore and DC and the Eastern Shore threatened by sea level rise, but perhaps especially in Western Maryland, in Garrett and Allegheny counties, where part of the Marcellus Shale actually lies. They oppose Co Point on the eastern side of the state because they know if it's built, what will happen on the western side of the state. Here's a farmer, a wine grower named Paul Roberts, who's with us tonight. He's going to be on a panel, and his land would be rendered really, really impacted if fracking is allowed all around his property and the pipelines and the compressor stations as the gas industry currently plans to do if they're allowed to. But tragically, this threat is not just to Western Maryland. That's because, and this was a surprise even to me until recently, there is rock formation gas, natural gas, all over the state of Maryland. It's not just in our Appalachian West here, but here's a map, and this is data taken from the U.S. Geological Survey right here. Now, what's this? Oh, this is the uh, Gettysburg Basin coming down in here into Carroll and Frederick counties. And, and what's this? Oh, this is the Culpeper Basin, a uh, part of Montgomery County and, and also Frederick County. And, and what's this? Oh, the Taylorsville Basin. These are all gas basins. And, and what's this? The Delmarva Basins right here. There are five gas basins in our state. I had no idea until about three months ago that this reality existed. So here's the Marcellus Shale, here are all the other basins, and all of these shale formations, again, contain gas. But these formations are deeper. They're deeper than the Marcellus Shale. So the gas industry tells us, don't worry about these. These are too deep. It'll be too hard to get to them. Well, you know, we may never get to them. But people were saying that just six or seven years ago about the Marcellus Shale right here, too deep. And yet, the gas industry figured out a way to frack in the Marcellus Shale. And I ask you, why would anyone believe that the same won't happen here, and here, and here, and here, and here? Now you can see why we are all Paul Roberts, the farmer in Western Maryland. This is a real, right now, coming fast threat to all of us, all across the state of Maryland. The evidence says so. The facts are sounding this alarm. So it really is a crossroads. If Cove Point is built as Dominion wants, it will change our state. 
We will have a completely altered future for our children, which is why I and others have already written to Governor O'Malley and the Public Service Commission asking them to review the facts, to protect us from this radical plan. And again, you can do the same. I hope that tonight you'll get some new education that maybe you didn't know. Maybe you'll be inspired by what you see, but also that you will be moved to action to write a letter to the governor and to sign a petition. And more on that in a moment. So, we are at a crossroads in our state of Maryland. If we build this Cove Point liquefied natural gas plant to export to Asia our gas from Appalachia, we will all hear the great sucking sound of Appalachian gas rushing to Asia and the great audible cry in our conscience of future generations asking us why. Why didn't you protect us when you could, when you had the facts? So, I ask you, what if we rejected the Cove Point detour? What then? Now, environmentalists are often accused of being opposed to everything. And we're, we're NIMBYs, not in my backyard. And you know what? There's some truth to that, you know? Um, we are opposed to a lot of things, and we do deserve some of the rap of not coming up with answers and alternatives to the things that we oppose which is why tonight we are saying not just no to Cove Point, but yes to something much better, as Bill McKibben said, better for the environment and for jobs. Now, I know, as Joe Uline mentioned earlier, there are some Maryland unions, some good, honorable, working union people who support the Cove Point proposal. And I'm sensitive to that. I grew up in a union household. My dad was a member of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, Local 837. And Joe Uline himself, who sang here earlier tonight, uh, a, a United Steelworker, an elected official to the AFL-CIO for years. His dad founded the United Steelworkers Local in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, Lorraine, Ohio. And now Joe is committed to organizing for good union jobs using clean energy. Clean energy, not dirty climate wrecking energy. Now, what are Maryland, what are we in favor of instead of CoPoint? And the answer is doubling doubling our state's wind and solar generation by the year 2025. Our current statutory goal in Maryland is to have our grid at 20% wind and solar in the year 2025. So let's pass a new law this coming legislative year, 2014, in the legislative session of 2014, to double it to 40% wind and solar by 2025. Not only is this doable, but on climate change, it will take the equivalent of 1.4 million cars off our roads. Not only will it save Marylanders some of the $73 we pay every month on health costs related to fossil fuel air pollution, it will also create more jobs for Maryland, construction and permanent jobs, than fracking and liquefying at Cove Point could ever do. Yes. So let's just break that down a little bit. What are we in favor of? Let's start with wind power. First of all, if Dominion invested the same $3.8 billion that it wants to spend on Cove Point, if it invested it in land-based wind power, that company could single-handedly increase by 50% the entire current wind capacity on the U.S. East Coast. That is mind-boggling. That would bring lots more wind power to this region and a lot more wind power to Maryland where it belongs. Now, I think we can agree that fracking is exotic. It is weird. It's technologically strange. It's foreign to our state. Liquefaction, it's foreign to our state. But wind power, it's always been here since the dawn of Maryland history. The tall ships, the iconic skipjacks on the Chesapeake Bay, wind power, and the Dutch-like windmills for milling. It's where the word comes from, from milling grain on the eastern shore. There's some of them that are still there on the eastern shore that you can see these Dutch-like windmills. This is indigenous en energy. This is native to our state. Arizona's signature clean energy is sun power. It's sunny all the time there. Iceland's signature is geothermal clean power. Maryland's signature clean energy is wind power. We have enough harnessable wind power right off the coast of Ocean City, equivalent to three quarters of all the electricity we use today in Maryland, right off our coast, which is why we can be proud. We can be proud 
that our General Assembly and Governor O'Malley passed and signed into law a law incentivizing offshore wind power just this April of this year, which features, which includes features that essentially guarantee that union labor will build those future wind farms off the coast of Maryland. In the same way, in the same way that union labor built the state's two existing land-based wind farms, both of them in Garrett County, as you can see here, those wind farms generate more tax revenue than any other single source in that county. And who built those wind farms in Western Maryland? The Western Maryland Building Trades Union. This is real world stuff. There are more land-based wind power potential in the lower eastern shore of Maryland and elsewhere, and it can be built by good paying union jobs. And here's the most exciting part of all. The wind industry is clamoring to manufacture the wind component parts here in our state. What other industry, name one, just one, what, are, what, what other industry is pounding on Maryland's door saying, can we come to your state and make things again? The wind industry wants to do it. Automobiles, no. Refrigeration companies, no. Wind industry, yes. You can see this giant turbine. This is an offshore uh, blade turbine and, uh, or blade and these turbine parts. Now the thing to keep in mind is that these parts are so large that they can't be made in China and be cost competitive. You can't build blades that big and turbines this big in China. The shipping costs all the way through the United States will make it cost prohibitive. They're going to be built on the eastern, the east coast of the United States. That's where they're going to be built. The jobs are guaranteed to come to this region. And I believe they can and will come to the state of Maryland. So what's we're going to get the manufacturing jobs along with the jobs installing the wind farms themselves. So what's the best way to make all of this happen? To double our state's current renewable energy portfolio, RPS law, um, that would double wind and solar in our state to 40%. How do we get there? Um, it would be transformative and doable and we can do it. And what's the evidence? It's because other countries are already doing it. Ireland right now has a 43% goal, mandatory goal, to get to clean renewable energy by the year 2020. Maine has a 40% goal to get there in the 2020s. And Minnesota, just this last May in Minnesota, the state House of Representatives passed a 40% RPS, clean electricity standard. Now, I can stand here before you and give you the jobs numbers that a bill like this 40% clean energy would bring to Maryland. I could tell you that nearly 4,000 construction jobs would come each year to Maryland with this law and more than 400 permanent jobs. But instead of me telling you all this on the jobs and clean energy front, let's just listen to what organized labor leaders in Minnesota have said and what they said in the spring when this 40% RPS bill passed in the House of Representatives. Quote, increasing the renewable electricity standard will create good jobs and further develop an emerging and thriving industry in Minnesota, according to the United Steelworkers District 11, Minnesota. And here are all the other unions that joined health officials and faith leaders and others in supporting the Minnesota bill. You guys ready to do this in Maryland? Yeah. yeah. This is something that we can all agree on, that passing a bill in our state in 2014 to double wind and solar is good for all of us, not just some of us. It's good for consumers because the price of wind keeps dropping. You can see here, this is a graph of the last few years of how wind power is falling. It's, um, and as far as solar power is concerned, it's just astonishing. I mean, are you guys ready for solar? Because it is coming, not just to Arizona, but to, to Maryland. 80%, an 80% drop in solar energy prices in this country just since 2008, a 20% decline in solar costs just last year alone. It is coming, solar, solar, solar. It's not just for Arizona anymore. And it's coming here, it's spreading, and the CEO of Mega Energy company NRG, really big energy company that has natural gas, uh, coal, and other resources, um, told Bloomberg Business News this last summer that distributed community-based solar power will displace the current utility-dominated grid system in just a decade or so. That's rooftop solar with wind. We're going to get rid of the old grid model of concentrated energy of nuclear and coal and switch to solar in less than a, de a decade. But how do we get there? We have to demand it as a people. We need a policy that keeps up 
The reason that solar and wind prices are dropping and creating so many jobs through expansion is precisely because states like Maryland and Minnesota over the last 10 years have been incentivizing this stuff over the last 10 years and creating the demand that created the economies of scale that have lowered the price. But we have to speed it up at a world that's 400 parts per million carbon pollution, rapid global warming. We have to speed it up with a 40% RPS law as well as something called community renewables laws that will help get solar panels in neighborhood scale on rooftops and churches and schools. We can do this. The bottom line is this. Dominion Resources has said that it wants to help labor in our state the same way that they say they want to help Maryland solve global warming. But if they really wanted to do both, they would invest their $3.8 billion in wind and solar here, but they don't want to do that, which is why let's help ourselves. Let's together pass a 40% clean electricity bill in 2014. Let's do it for the jobs, for the health, for the real energy independence for our country. And by the way, I don't know how you get to energy independence in America by shipping our natural gas to Asia. And let's do it because without a solution to climate change, we won't have an economy. Last summer, Governor Martin O'Malley asked a blue ribbon panel of Maryland scientists to tell him how bad sea level rise could get along our state's coastline. The governor handpicked a panel of Maryland scientists and said, tell me how bad sea level rise is gonna get. And that panel told him in July that if we keep burning coal, oil, and natural gas here and worldwide, Mr. Governor, we could get as much as 5.7 feet by the year 2100. Now, here is literally Cove Point. This is Calvert County. This is the point. Here is the Dominion's current import facility, much smaller than the export facility they want to build. This is from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is government data. These green areas are, are low-lying areas. So the governor's panel said we could get as much as five feet of sea level rise if we keep burning natural gas, coal, and oil. What happens when we get one foot of sea level rise? This is what happens from one foot. Two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet. The community is wiped out. Thousands of people's homes right here. All these other, Dominion's own pier right here. The ships is destroyed. Bridges, incoming roads are cut off. This community is literally wiped out. This cannot be the future that we allow. This is literally the convergence of metaphor and reality. They converge in this photograph of predicted sea level rise from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric, Atmospheric Administration. Our future is not with fracking and piping and liquefaction and tankering and piping again and setting our Appalachian gas on fire in India and Japan. Not this radical idea brought to us by an out-of-state company that will literally wipe out our coastal communities. So we are at a crossroads. We have to choose now. There's no sea level rise that comes with wind power, plus you get the jobs. There's no Hurricane Sandy that comes with solar power, plus you get the jobs. This is our future, and this is our future. Clean energy, not Coke Point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.